Hello everyone, this is GrayShop117, bringing another Sue H2 a replay. This is a 4v4, there you go guys. 4v4 with HDG. Oh my god, I, I'll just say V. Saddam's insane. Uh, Tonga, 30. Ryan, oh boy, can't wait to find out what this name's gonna be. Uh, oh damn, oh well, there we go, Xao. Xao. Um, and then we have, uh, Luding. Luding, there we go. Luding. Wait, is that it? I'll just say yidding. There we go, yidding. Anyway, a 4v4 on hill four, or hunt through, blah, blah, 400. Yeah, 400. Jesus Christ, I'm losing my mind. So what happens when you do so many replays in a row. But in any case, uh, if you want to submit your own replay, go to my Gmail or my Facebook, and I will check it out. And then I will possibly put it on the channel. So highly recommend you submit it so I can take a look. But in any case, Actually, funny enough, I'm getting a lot of Hill 400 games. So hopefully we'll see how this one goes. But in any case, first you submit it to me. Again, I'm giving you a heads up so that way if you don't want to know, you can skip this part. So don't complain to me in the comments. Great shot, I didn't want to know. Great, you didn't want to know. Skip this part. Enough warnings? Okay. Saddam's, in uh, Saddam's insane. Thank you very much for submitting the replay. Again, always want to give out a shout out to the person who submitted it because again... I want to shout out the person who submitted it for taking the time and effort for doing that. It may sound stupid, but trust me, it's it's like the same as when I grew up uh, watching on YouTube and I would see people do like top tens, and I mean actual like good top tens would be like Anosh replays. Like Anosh top ten on Machinima was like the thing I remember for so long of doing, and I actually got on there once as number one. I'm so fucking happy. I was. Number one, you can probably still find it. I think it was top 10 weirdest moments in Halo 4. Um, I had mini elites. And I was like, and literally the guy apparently like busted out laughing when he saw it. He's like, what the fuck? Because literally you see a Spartan just like stab, a t like do this animation for assassination. But it's against this tiny elite that's doing like a little jingle. And it all looks like a Spartan stepping on him. It's great. He's just stabbing the air. But in any case, uh, conscripts managed to push on left. Nice job. Should be able to take over this area <clears throat> on the right we have uh more allied forces pushing on in this area should be a lot easier for the axis to hold um but we'll see how well the uh, the soviets do again nice soviet uh two-pronged assault on both sides germans though giving this one a little bit more of a fight uh let's double check real quick so let's double check all their ranks while this is going on so a lower rank game oh my god uh at least for the axis uh, nope allies too so Again, not a lot of play time, but that doesn't mean they don't have some really good plays this game, so we'll see how things go. We have fortifications, so good defensive play, along with your artillery, which is by far one of the best abilities in the game. Uh, we have uh, mechanized assault for, again, just good armored play, and also for some assault grands, which everyone loves. Apparently, though, he doesn't want to deploy him. Is he even moving up unit? Okay, he is. Slowly but surely. Actually, he's playing defensively here, which not a bad idea. At least you're holding on to the fuel, keeping away from the allies. Allies, though, uh, managing, though, to stop the Grandier squads from pushing on any further. Wait, you're placing barbed wire in a minefield. Okay, it's a minefield. Nice. Not a bad idea. Stop them from coming around here. Um, allies, though, soon need capture the left-hand side. Very surprised that they aren't. Instead, wow. Instead, they're like, hey, let's push against the enemy base. Um, hey, dude, you may want to take... You may want to take the resources before you start that. So that was actually kind of a waste, honestly. Yidding. You really should have it. Anyway, Exao. Not Extro, by the way. Uh, there's a movie called Extro. And actually, I think there's three of them. Uh, it's an alien movie. By the way, I've watched a lot of really, really bad B movies uh, as a child, which really shouldn't have, but I did. Nice. By the way, nice retreat right into the minefield. Um, but uh, Extro is actually not a terrible movie. Um, but the reason I bring it up is just because it has one of the freaking weirdest scenes of an alien, uh, infecting a woman and then the woman giving birth to a full grown man. It's like one of the most freak, freaky scenes I saw as a kid. That and also I think literally a week later I saw Carnosaur and, uh, oh boy, that was from, uh, oh boy, that's actually from a book in the same year that, uh, Jurassic Park came out. Actually, I think it came out before Jurassic Park. And that has women giving birth to dinosaurs. So, there you go. That's just some weird B-movie facts for you. The sequels don't have it, but I think the, se the sequels are a lot worse in Extro. And Carnosaur. Carnosaur also uses stock footage like crazy. 
So, any case, while, while I'm going on this, I should probably give a highlight, oh my god, poor unit, uh, highlight to the allies, which are doing a damn good job at least capturing the outer rim of this map, while the axes are taking the middle portion, which is great, because they're getting a ton of munitions, while the allies are getting, well, they would get a ton of, uh, uh, fuel if they would actually take this point, but they're not, and I love the S minefield that was placed here, so the Levent, I'm sorry, Tonga, definitely fantastic job on defense play over here, really, really freaking good. Um, I honestly think the allies should probably fall back and probably focus more mid because the fact that this guy's actually holding off for so long kind of shows you something. Anyway, uh, V moving up a sniper as well. See how long that thing lasts. Uh, Saddam insane trying to help on the right, but unfortunately just having some issues, but F, hey, finally took the point. So good for him. Let's see. Let's go over doctrines. 30 went with Savine, Soviet, sorry, Soviet combined arms. So you have a nice artillery, recon, and direct strike. So all in one. Very good. Ryan, go mobile assault. So nice infantry support weapons plus the mattress, which destroys infantry and does some stuff with its light armor. Poor Volk Squad, you're going to die. Uh, need to re work on your retreating. Insane. Just a little quicker. Uh, let's see. We have a vent. We already went over him. Uh... I think that's... Oh, I'm sorry. We have Yidding. Go and guard rifle. So you got some heavier tanks. We got a howitzer. Uh, Stervik strike. So not, uh, overall, g a good set of um, weaponry for heavy artillery, heavier infantry, heavy armor. Maybe nothing amazing in one, but hey, pretty good across the board. MG and negative cover. Not the best, but likely with the conscripts uh, rushing around, managed to push back the uh, MG. Let's see. I, I guess I should... Pr Probably I mentioned the B-movie stuff. Should probably keep going this. Let's see. Just watch The Relic uh, off Amazon Prime. Um, not to shout out Amazon Prime, but I'm just like, oh, right. I have all these monster movies I can watch. So, of course, my spare time, I'm like, hey, let me watch it. Terrible. Like, seriously. The whole thing, they keep building up this creature, and it's like, oh, my God. Just get to the point. In most movies, be like, most movies, even Godzilla movies, they would go in a faster plot than this. By God. But, yeah, overall, it's, uh... How do I, it, it was it was bad. The effects were okay in certain parts and laughably bad in others, and just people reacting. The, the museum, literally, where this main sit, setting takes place, is literally a death trap. Like I've never seen a museum with this many security features. No wonder they need so much funding. That was the big issue in that movie. In any case, looks like once again we have uh, Yitting launching another assault toward the Soviet. I'm sorry, German player, really putting a lot of pressure on him, which is very risky. Uh, but hey, it seems to be working out. Nice job moving up the other MG to push them back. So really good plays over here. Again, just keeping up the pressure. Nice hit as well with the mortar. So, good job pushing the axis back. Unfortunately, it's not like they have far to run, where you have to run all the way back to base, which is going to take a lot more time. Which, speaking of which, because of, well, all the defenses up here, uh, this guy's still hanging out pretty damn well. Like, really close to your base. So... Hey, you know what? As long as this guy is trying to get all that munitions, it works for him. Uh, that said, he should probably go capture that. Anyway, back on right, we have uh, Insane trying to retake this area. We have a bunker going down, most likely for defense in this sector. Uh, MG over here, just trying to hold on out. Conscripts just trying to hold. We have an MG on this sector, also trying to suppress some infantry. So not too shabby. A nice fire grenade. Conscripts is going to want to retreat and get the hell out of there. Uh, yeah, you're really low on health. Do you actually have a med? No, you don't. Do you... I'm sorry, I should probably go over. Yeah, there are three Soviets and a British. You don't have a medical facility, but you have all the AT upgrades. You do. So, Yidding actually has the medics, which actually kind of makes sense. He's the guy who's going the farthest, so he wants to make sure he's getting the best bang for his buck for his infantry. So, good for him. Does he have been placing mines? No, he's a lot of munitions. I would have definitely placed some mines. Um, looks like we have no minesweeper as well, so... Although he is getting some guard troops... Which is definitely going to uh, hamper this scout car and half-track to kind of move on in with just sheer AT fire. Though the, ha the, the half-track will definitely do enough damage to push those suckers back as they don't have, like, satchels or something to really just hammer that. They're really good for, like, medium-long-range tank fare, unlike the penal troops, which are good for close-range armor armored warfare. So, yeah, the, the guard troops will do damage, but not enough before the fire takes place. Anyway, once again, this guy is just hanging out in mid. Really, there's not much going on in mid. The allies are just kind of staying out of there. A half track moving on in. Oh my god, just tearing apart Insane's forces. Barely managing to get the hell out of there. 
It's a nice job on his part. At least the axes got the left hand side back, so they're getting resources, which is good. Now, unfortunately, they the for the allies, they also just took back the right, or at least some regard, so they'll be able to knock out the allied fuel. With that and the munitions currently going offline, the allies are in for one tough uh, game, I would say. They're gonna need something. Recon's going out, but let's see how that goes. Double MG over here. So, huh. We'll see how they, I mean, right now they're holding not too bad, but it could. <sighs> right now the big problem is that half a half track. Uh, Armor piercing rounds would be effective, but unfortunately we don't have that. A lot of MGs will, I mean, certainly do damage to it. Oh, wow. A half track just blowing it out of the sky. Uh, let's see. MG kind of moving around. Finally, we, oh, we have another MG over here. You have three. All, all this guy's doing is MGs, but he's somehow still doing decently well, so I'll give you that. Um, are you just kind of ranked? No, he doesn't really have too much. I'm thinking, like, maybe you're using all the resource for something, but no, you have a lot of manpower. Wow, the minefield just being torn apart. Uh, maybe a teller mine would have done wonders. Anyway, a half track just hitting the pioneer squad over here instead of hitting the anti oh, well, the MG right there, which is kind of weird. Um, do you have a scout car moving in or something? No half track, which isn't going to do much. You have a T-70 also being deployed. So it's not like 30 uh, is going to just, you know, go down de uh, lying dead. No, he's going to come back full force and hopefully push back the enemy. All the guard troops also pushing back the scout car. One shot should knock it out if we can get one last AT. And there it goes. Minefield has been deployed. And oh my god, we're about to see a lot of dead Soviets. Uh, wow, or not. It's, they're just walking through all the explosions. Okay. Grenade? Grenade, or... Okay. That was a little late on the grenade. You actually could have probably used that for cover. And we have penal troops moving on up. So, that's a lot of AT. Uh, probably smoke in this sector would be helpful to stop, get it past the MG. Uh, that may be a little bit late on that. MG kind of moving on in. Penal troops are probably going to have to retreat. Because they're probably going to be suppressed. Oh boy. Once again, this guy's just hanging out over here. Like seriously, there's not much stopping him. I'm really surprised that the allies aren't pressing mid. But they're going around the outer flanks. And I'm just waiting. I'm so waiting for V to just get troops. Wait for it. And just press in mid. Because he honestly has like not much. Like, honestly, you could probably push up and do quite a bit of damage. But, anyway, scout car moving on in. Trying to overwhelm the position. Armor piercing grounds would do wonders, but... Oh, wow. Or the minefield. Holy mackerel. Almost knocked out the scout car. Actually, one more major hit. Could? Possibly? Or Panzerfaust. Yeah, Panzerfaust would do it. <laughs> there it goes. So, good job on, his, uh, on that part. Any case, uh, we have... Troops moving on in with the pack gun. And oh my god, so many Grandier squads. But he has middle, like, secured, so I can't blast him for it. I, I would say it's kind of stupid he doesn't try to push up. But then, again, he has, like, troops on standby across this entire sector and holding munitions. So maybe he's doing his job. I, I shouldn't ask him to do more because he's doing everything he needs to. Uh, maybe I would ask for, uh, what's this guy? Tonga? To stop going with just Pioneers and MGs. I mean, great, you got a scout car, good for you, but... Okay, playing down. A hat track up to vet two. Good for it. Uh, we also have a mortar pit really far back. Weird spot. Not uh, unsure why you're there. And also, it looks like we have uh, insane going more mid. And look at, by the way, how much. Like, Jesus Christ, you have a lot of mid. And then this Levent guy ha doesn't have enough. I don't know what you're saving up for. I really, really don't. Like, are you plan to assault Grand Spam? Well, no, you're not. Everything in Baja over here requires fuel, which you absolutely do not have. Hell, it would be actually kind of nice for the Axes if you can hold on to that. Because the Allies, with their counterattack, managed to take back their fuel. So, yeah. Anyway, meanwhile, all these guys... Oh, no. The sniper. Get it out of there. Damn it. T-70 and a T-34 moving on in. Double pack opening fire of the infantry, but... Just as stupid as that sentence says, they do nothing against infantry. Half track though, moving on in. Oh, great shots on the T70. Oh boy, that right hook is coming in and doing quite a bit of damage to the axes, but they're still holding on barely. Half track's burning them alive. Just barely keeping this point under their control. 
Just hold, men. Just hold. Damn, double pack managed to push back that T-34 really well. Infantry taking this point, though. Barely. Oh, there. damn, there goes the uh, half track. Oh, now we have Insane's half track in mid. Oh, burn, baby, burn. But that one more shot and you're screwed. Yep, there it goes. The mortar is now trying to take the point, but alas, it's now falling back. MG still su causing suppression. A half track has been deployed, helping hold this point. Because Grandier Squad needs to retreat. So, well, yeah, okay. So, V somehow managed to get a huge army and then kind of lose it from that massive allied counterattack. Uh, also, we can see here that commander wise, we can see here that, uh, was it, Ia Iexo? Uh, went Soviet shock army. So, a lot heavier infantry and heavy artillery still. So, good for him. That being said, allies counterattacking on left. Nice job uh, managing to knock out the Axis fuel again. So I like how both sides keep losing their fuel. That's pretty fucking great, in all things considered. But, uh... In any case, uh, well, commandos, okay. Uh, having issues, I see. But, uh, you know, could be worse, I guess. Managing to still take the point. MG, though, will probably stop you very soon. Up oh, there we go. How did I know he was going to walk into that? I, I just had this feeling. Ooh, ooh. Uh, no, I can't sing to save my life. But, in any case, let's get back to this game. So, uh, j wow, okay. Uh, Germans managing to retake the fuel, at least hold that, so that's good. Allies, though, grabbing the stars, and by God, they need it. Um, they need to start pushing down the points against the Axis. Axis now doubling down in mid. It looks like they're playing some defenses. Uh, actually, Fort Guy should really be laying down some stuff. Oh, nice! He did! He laid down an emplacement to kind of guard the flank up here. Should help against infantry and light armor overall, so good job. And also planes! Let's not let's not forget about all the planes, because actually the Allies have, um, well, they can definitely call in a number of planes. So, yeah, good, good idea to kind of shoot them all down. Oh boy, big blob coming in. Dropping smoke to get the fuck out of there. Get the A half track out of there. Go, go, go! Yeah, AT gun, you're gonna need something, I don't know, more suppressive to really do to really hold that thing back. Because otherwise, yeah, they're going not only did they knock out both pack guns, but they're gonna take both pack guns because they're Soviet and they do that. And it's really annoying, but fantastic at the same time. Certain pioneers moving on in, but again, they're been equipped with AT. And this infantry is gonna easily hold them back. So MG just laying them up. Holding them back. So let's see, MG over here. Again, they have an, there's an MG standoff. Oh boy. Anyway, with Great Ears on standby, could probably move on in and take back, uh, at least continue to hold these points. Is that Katusha? He's hitting the MG, isn't he? Oh, he's hitting, no, he's hitting the mortar. Mortar is really well positioned. I like his health behind the forest. Actually, there's nothing really here, so I'm sure about that. Allies re-managing to take mid. Good for them. Again, this is where taking the pack guns really would have helped. Because, well, they could have pushed back this light armor. Like, seriously. Luckily, again, those guard troops are just doing wonders to push back that A half track. Which is, by like, I think this is like the third time this thing has fallen back. Barely alive. Just, ugh, hanging in there. Meanwhile, we double check on left. We can see here the allies still trying to hang in there. Hold on to the point. Not amazingly well. And again, minesweepers for the love of God. But hell, they're holding. They are holding. Wait, why don't you capture this? MG's back here. The other MG's over here. You just stay right here and you can capture it. Just stay on the edge. Uh, T-70 managing to hit the mortar. We have more mine. Oh my God. There's so many S minefields. Oh my God. The... I wonder if the Axis were like, no, we're going to make the entire map an S minefield just because fuck it, why not? Anyway, Flame Half Track doing quite a decent amount of damage versus the infantry, but again, AT weapons can do a lot of damage to you. Uh, plane's probably going to be shot down. Question is, will it, I was going to say hit anything, and well, no, it's actually right between two guys fighting, which is even better. Um, oh boy. Actually... Up, oh, Germans pushing on in. Not going well. Cervix strike coming on in to help counteract the uh, well Germans in the area. 
Yeah, German's been so far pushed back. The Allies have really doubled down in mid now. And it's not really going great. Luckily, you got V coming back in there. Uh, unfortunately, he, they definitely need some armor. We don't have Panzer IV by AD, HDG. We have a Luke's. So we have a half track. Nice job. Shooting down some planes. Uh, play managed to survive. No, it's coming back. It's going to die. It, it's so going to die. I like how tank this. Yeah, shoot the AA gun. That's a great idea. That was a beautiful crash. Luke's going in there trying to get some nice shots in at the infantry. Fortunately, the double T-70 is going to stop that in its tracks. Again, T-70 is uh, not great versing it, but uh, again, it'll still do enough damage to overwhelm a Luke's. Drop smoke, drop smoke, drop smoke, drop smoke, drop smoke, drop smoke, drop smoke. Oh, no smoke. I was really hoping for smoke. I was really hoping for smoke. That way, again, you could save the unit. But, oh my god, this is going to be another time where the A half track is going to... Oh, we know. It's actually going to kill the T-70. Holy fuck. That was awesome. Holy mackerel. Freaking AA gun knocking out two T-70s. Uh, is that another? Okay, fun fact. Using it, you, unless it's Battlefield 1 logic, a plane is not good against, well, oh, never mind. It was a direct strike. I don't know why you were attacking that, because they just moved out of the way. Um, yeah, but a, a, a uh, sorry, a airstrike is not that great against anti-air guns. But for some reason in Battlefield 1, you play a pilot that's supposed to hit anti-air guns. Maybe they're so crappy they're fine, but eh, hey, it's not like World War 1 planes were exactly made out of top tier material. They, they were pretty easy to uh, ca have havoc with and shoot down. Hell, I think, I, I let, what was it? There was a reports like, in the beginning of World War One, people, the, like, aircraft, they would, they would be, like, use their own, like, pistols, and they would throw bricks down at the people below, and then eventually they'd chuck grenades and, uh, chuck other stuff, just be, like, cause havoc, or as much as possible, and eventually, like, wait, we can drop bombs on this thing, maybe that'll be effective. Oh, free KV in mid! That's pretty freaking cool. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no, he doesn't have enough for a satchel! Oh my god, this AA half track is so freaking lucky. 15 kills. God tier AA half track. Stop moving. Stop moving. Stop moving. You can't move up too much. You're about to die. If that. Yep, guards. Opening fire. Drop smoke. Drop smoke. Oh no, serving strike. No, no, no. God damn it. Oh well. It was the AA gun that could. Uh. Oh my god. Soviet plane was like, I'm gonna kamikaze the enemy. Yeah, I, I think they forgot to uh, check who the enemy was. Almost killed themselves. But I, I'll give it this. Allies, even though they've been down, giving one a fierce counterattack. Holy crap. Axe is down to what easily like mid, uh, lower 50s, upper 40s. While the Allies easily have mid 60s, low 60s, probably around there. Half track going around the enemy position. Not sure exactly why. Is that AI? We have an AI. No, we no, no AIs. Okay. Want to make sure. T70 going to probably kill that sucker. I have no idea what V is planning. But uh, this is... Uh, fun fact. A half track's flamethrower will not kill a T70. Just in case you guys didn't know that. It won't do that. Meanwhile, British infantry still managing to hold on to the fuel. Um, <clears throat> it's funny because they managed to hold on to the fuel. But they can't capture this point to get it back to their base. And while the uh, allies can hold on to this point, the Germans will not allow them to capture these two points so they can't get the resources back to their base. So it's just uh, kind of a mixed bag, all in all. Um, right now I see it easier for the Germans to take this point than the allies taking this point, but that's more because of the allied, uh, sorry, the uh, well yeah, the allied troubles of taking this point, you know, instead of dropping smoke or something. Because, you know, it's not like you don't have smoke grenades or something that can throw. That way you can get close and get around. Or artillery or something along those lines. Actually, yeah, you have artillery. Have you built artillery yet? No. You just built massive amount of Katushas. Which, once again, you could probably fire over there and just be doing fine. Uh, Panzer IV, by the way, owning a T-70. Very nice shot. We still have penal troops over here. They do have enough for a satchel. Oh my god, you have enough for a minefield as well. Jesus Christ. That would be helpful. Oh, uh, 
I guess speaking, I uh, probably while well, I'm watching this Panzer IV get satchel. Um, probably. Oh no, it's gonna maybe get out of there. Oh my god, look at all the PTS rifles. Well, somebody walked into something. Um, speaking of by the way, B movies and just killing a B movie that's good because I've been shit talking a lot of them. Arachnophobia, which I hear is getting a sequel or not a sequel, sorry, a remake. Um, it's a, it's a really stupid premise. Um, and I think Steven Spielberg had some attachment to it as producer, but overall, it's just a family living in a in a town and a sp and a spider that hitched a ride from South America in a very isolated place. It's very poisonous because it had to be it evolved. Um, similar to like the frog snake scenario in Australia where you had a frog and snake that literally kept going back and forth for venom uh, being more and more poisonous. I think you had moths or something that was just immune to their venom so they just made a highly highly uh, venomous bite that can pretty much kill people in like a minute. It's like close to like cyanide. Um, but in any case, it's really well done, has great scenes, uh, John Goodman's in it, and he has a fantastic comedic role in it. There's actually a lot of really good, talented actors in there, there. um, but in any case, highly recommend it, really good B-movie. I'm trying to find it. Also, Tremors. Tremors is always a good B-movie to watch. It's so, it's so dumb, but it uses its dumbness to the best effect to make it itself a smart movie, if that makes sense. It's like the best B-movie a B-movie can get. Let's like a similar would be like Gremlins or something where it's just uh, it, it's a monster movie that just knows what it is and excels at everything it does um, to the best it can. Meanwhile, the Axis. Speaking of doing the best it can, Axis doing a hell of a counterattack on right, managing it looks like to retake that star. Still can't manage to hold on to this point, but maybe soon they'll grab it. Uh, S285 moving on in. Maybe the uh, T34 hit some of those mines. I know you were placing some mines. Weird how you placed them around this point. Instead of, like, I don't know, out here. Oh, there. You actually hit one. Cool. Uh, S-285, your best idea is distance, not close range. So the fact you're right there fighting, not a good idea. Also, you may want to call your ally. Uh, I mean, he has an S-276, and it's not going to help a lot, but it'll help out some. Oh, my God. No, don't. You are you son of a bitch. You're literally going to be targeted by two Panzer IVs now. Do you want to die? Uh, actually, no. He might. No, double Panzer IVs and open fire. Might knock it out. S-85 could knock out Panzer IV, though. There we go. One's down. Oh, okay, good hit. Now I just need to continue to hold on to that point. All right. So big allied assault in mid now. A lot of artillery and MGs going down. Pack 43 in place. Again, fortifications expert. I know a lot of people discount the Pack 43 as being stupid and something that you can easily knock out. But once again, the Pack 43 is very good in unique situations. I would not have placed it here. I would place it like right here because again, that way it, it would be a hard time for infantry and stuff like that to hit it, but it can still fire through and hit everything over here. You you want to put in positions where you want it, essentially you want to put in positions that make full use of the Pack 43's ability to fire through cover. That's how it's extremely useful. Like Edelbrook Station, it can fire through all that terrain hit vehicles from out of fucking nowhere. And that's why it's awesome. And you can hide it behind buildings so they can't see it and they can't hurt it directly. Um, sure, they could use recon and knock it out or something along those lines. But that being said, I use it more not for like wide open defense, but more like surprise hits. Where the enemy wouldn't expect there to be AT present or have their tank be hurt and it just starts shredding their armor. Anyway, double airstrike coming on in. So, literally. But luckily we got Oswinds in play, so expect all the planes to be shot down and crash. Oh my god, so many allied planes. Actually, we have an Axis plane too. We got another one crashing. Oh, might have knocked out the mortar, damn. You have a flag emplacement going right in front to hold back the infantry. Nice. Infantry trying to hold out. Needs some armor to really help out. T-34 kind of moving on in. Why do you have double mortar pits here? Like, why? There's, here. I guess they're kind of relying on fortification, but the mortar pits, I don't think, would go that far. In my eyes, I I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. We have a, we have a Stug moving in now. Uh, probably the Cromwell's going to have some issues against that. We have a Panzer IV, barely clinging on, trying to knock out the S-85. S-85's best chance would probably just be to fall back and allow the goddamn penal troops 
to knock out the unit that literally cannot move very quickly and you throw satchels on it and it's GG. But no, you kept the SU-85 there because, well, they're like, hey, it'll be fine. I swear to God, if you throw a satchel and it gets hit by the fu- Oh my God, how the fuck did you miss? Well, it's main guns knocked out from the satchel, some freaking how. So you just need a couple more hits and you should be able to kill it. Why do I feel like you're gonna fail in that regard? I feel like you're gonna fail. Meanwhile, it looks like the Axis, uh, wow, okay, never mind. Neither side still has fuel. Massive ally counterattack gonna happen right now, and the Grenadiers are gonna have a hard time holding. Yeah, they're gonna wanna fall back before they, like, he, oh, he's gonna lose that unit. Say goodbye to the three-star Grenadier squad, boys. Oh, I knew thee well. Although, frag bomb's coming in. Can we get a nice swipe? Oh, it just hits a few units. Oh, that would've been amazing if that would've hit. That would've been so good. But in any capacity, uh, yeah, and Germans holding mid really damn well. On the far right, they're holding really damn well. On far left, they're holding really damn well. I, 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 w I wonder if you guys can hear it, like a pretty good trend. So if they can just manage to capture these points, they would, this game would be GG. But Ally is still giving it hell, even though they are making some very weird decisions with the mortar pits. I don't know why you made the mortar pits there, because especially with the mattress, double mattress even. Wait. Are you fucking kidding me? Not only did you give them a Cromwell, but the Germans now have a mattress. This is by far the highlight. Just taking stolen equipment, because why the hell not? Just seriously. But yes, uh, sometimes the best unit to use against the enemy is their own shit. So, again, mattress, very good against infantry blobs. Guess what he has all grouped up here? Large blobs. So, yeah, n n nice idea. N nice idea. Anyway, it looks like the allies don't manage to re counter attack and retake a lot of this area. Now, if they can just grab the freaking fuel, uh, they would be doing a lot better. Nice job also with all the veterancy by Yidding. Uh, how is everyone doing? So, you, you lost quite a bit, lost quite a bit, lost quite a bit. Overall, like 60s? Yeah, 60s is their army size. Axis, though, except for, oh my god, HDG, just freaking collapsing. Not really much of anything left. Are you really just like kind of, oh my god, the plane crashed into his base? <laughs> Holy crap. He's not having a good day. I think the plane just wiped out a couple of his squads too. That's, that's freaking, that's amazing. That's, that's truly amazing. So yeah, he's down right now. He's a lot of manpower, but kind of needs to get that back up. Uh, looks like we have V coming over to help him a lot. Again, they have excess manpower, which is good. Um... We taking this point. Half track is not really. Uh, we do have some AT forces, which could definitely cause some uh, issue for these guys. Also, look at all the weapons on the ground. You literally, don't have to upgrade these anymore. Just pick up your stuff on the ground. Um, oh, Katusha opening fire. Looks like they might be able to kill the Stug. If they get one Katusha shot on the Stug, that would be enough to kill it. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, though. Stug managed to make it out of there. Katusha one shot on the Cromo could kill it. Oh. Doesn't look like that's the case, but uh, they at least kill with the Piots. Armor helping to retake mid. Uh, pack 43 still there with the flak. Looks like a lot of artillery did come down, which is actually surprising. We're not seeing, like, actually heavy artillery being made. Because you figured that would be perfect to fight the fortification guy, but no, apparently not. Uh, we have KV-1 firing, and yeah, the, 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 they're going to retreat. Again, mines right here would have been great to be a player. Like, seriously, place some mines. You press, you press in their base enough. It, it's astounding to me you haven't done that. Anyway, KV-1 looks like trying to push on in. Pack 43 could turn and open fire. But alas, just not... Oh, there we go. Oh, he's coming in to help. Is he really just going to walk in and just keep shooting it? I mean, KV-1 definitely... Oh, my God. Why are you still firing? Oh, yeah, he's still going in. Allies, though, down because the Axes have control of all the points. Uh, KV-1, this is probably a bad idea to just start attacking his base. I mean, yeah, you're doing damage, but it's not like you're able to hold out against all this infantry and whatnot. And, oh my god, they really could have just picked up this stuff and opened fire and killed that thing. Um, anyway, uh, another plane crash? Another plane crash, okay. Anyway, Allies really trying desperately to take out that fuel. Uh... A lot of grenades going out. More weapons being dropped again, but it's it, it's fine. Uh, they still have a AT gun over here. Knock out the Stug, which has no main gun. Sure, why not? 
Holy crap. Tonga has a ton of forces now. Uh, yeah, Panzer for opening fire, causing some suppression. Bunker, unfortunately, not being made, though. T-34, get the fuck out of there before you die real stupidly, and you did. Oh, my God. We have this guy. Oh, my God, I didn't realize Kadush was that close. Anyway, uh, get more infantry, retake the right. Like, seriously, guys, it's not that difficult. Just, you need to take the stars. It seems like they're more con like, concerned about taking the fuel. I mean, right now, yeah, they're, they're equal in fuel to the Axis. But you know what the Axis are taking control of? Goddamn victory points. They realize, oh, guys, we can win this game via victory points. Hell, they're not even trying to capture the point. Like, decap it. Throw fucking satchel. Oh, okay, you are throwing satchels. Good. We, we're we not going to throw a second satchel, boys? Or Okay, there we go. Actually, at this point, you don't even need to throw it. Holy crap. You got enough artillery coming down this sector. Do you have enough artillery? I just, I just want to make sure. Do you, do you have enough artillery coming down? Oh, my God. Yeah. Panzerwerfer in the mattresses opening fire. Oh, boy. That's a... That's a... That's a lot. That is a... That's a lot. In any case, uh, let's get to this, shall we? Um, so, finally, the Allies managed to take over one victory point on here. And they decap mid, which is good. Uh, very good for them. The problem is they're going to lose. <laughs> They've... Put up really no concentrate defense anywhere. Uh, nice job with the pack for you, uh, with the Katusha fire clearing a lot of the packs in mid. Zero artillery. Why are you going to retreat? They can't see you. They can't see you. You are fine. As long as you move over a little bit. They can't see you right now. So you're perfectly fine. It only helps if they can see you. Alright. Okay. That was a really stupid zero artillery without recon. Tiger tank fighting over here. But once again, T-34 could easily... Fight that. Insane says GG. I, I... Sure. Why not? Um, really, right now, the biggest issue is the allies. The allies are their own, like, own negative. Oh, my God. Please ram. Please ram. Please... Or throw satchel. Please throw a satchel. You, If you throw a satchel, you could kill that tank. You honestly could have killed the tiger. Oh, wait. No. Well, there's more armor coming in. They're, they're, they're probably going to die now. Well, I mean, it would have helped the person Tiger, surely. Oh, wait, no, do you have a Sturmbrick Strike? Oh, no, you don't have any Direct Strike anymore. You have 700 munitions. Maybe some mines over here would have been helpful, especially with the Engineer Squad's right there. S-25 just... Okay, slowly back up. Just slowly back up. That's what you need to do. Slowly back up. To, uh, oh, you, you know, AT grenades and conscripts. God damn it. Ah, oh, damn it. It's not like the alleys were terrible. They, again, questionable decisions. Like, the amount of freaking mattresses. So he has four mattresses! Four! Like, I... I get it. I get it. You want to annihilate everything, all the fortifications over here. Also, this is a great place for back 43. Just kind of hidden by the forest and the church. Nice long range. Can hit pretty much any target come through this choke point. Really nice placement, seriously. But... <laughs> Um, I, God damn it. They just forgot about the victory points. Like, the Allies still had a decent army through and through. They had, like, what? Probably lower 50s. And then the Axis had upper 70s. So they still had a fighting force left. And if they actually would have got some kills, uh, like right here, I'm assuming they would have gotten a lot of kills right here, uh, then, yeah, they would have done great. But it's like, okay, if you have 700 munitions, mines, and cervix strikes, etc. Kind of coordinate, kind of guard locations. Like, the, for how long was both, and again, this kind of with the axis too. How long were both sides that like, kind of just like, not really being covered? Also, Jesus Christ, HGD, get some men. You can, I, I feel like you kind of gave up halfway through. Oh boy. Anyway, let's go check damage. So yeah, Ryan not doing a lot. I wonder why. He's kind of camping over here with his artillery. And it's not even heavy artillery. It's like light artillery with mortars and a mattress. Um, best player, though, was Yeeting on the allied side. Again, um, if I had to give why, I'm assuming the Katushas? You had you had Katushas, right? Nope. And the uh, PTRS rifles? Hold on. What was the best unit? Guards. Okay, yeah, your guards were pretty good. Um, wait, are you... Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me the guy with the most Katushas didn't... Uh, okay. Fair point. You didn't get the most amount of kills. You got got the least. Okay. They took a lot of casualties overall. Holy mackerel. Um, ally, I'm sorry, the Axis. Axis did a good job holding on most fronts. 
got plenty of kills. Best player was insane, and yeah, just kind of for holding, I could see why. Uh, HGG, I mean, yeah, you got the most kills, but also you had the most amount of manpower, and you kind of lost everything over and over, and I thought you gave up, honestly. But, yeah, I mean, nice minefields, I'll give it that for the Axis. Uh, nice fortifications. Allies, you have all this down weaponry. Picked it the fuck up. Same thing with the al uh, the Axis. I mean, the Axis is not probably as good unless you give it to the, P uh, the Pioneers, but seriously, how many troops did you have over there? Like, the Conscript Squad, you could have gave this stuff to. S seriously. Um, also, good armor pushes in the beginning. Uh, that being said, a lot, the amount of AT on the Axis, uh, sorry, the Allied side, didn't exactly help the, um, the Axis at all. So, good job on the AT allies. Good job on the AT infantry. That being said, again, kind of main focus should have been the, the control points. You really should have put more focus on there. And actually, kind of like mid, kind of not even being contested, was kind of like a big head scratcher, on, in all honesty. But overall, that's game. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. This has been Gray Show on 7, and I'll see you all next time. Hello, everyone, and before I go, I want to give a special shout out to Patreon supporters Ace. Joey, Junior Chicklist, Matthew Leppin, Ollie, Only Play Apple, Sam Smith, Sergeant McPain, Streaking Wookie, White Hot D, Aaron Yee, Jordan Savat, Leo Lou, Mikhail Persons, Nathan Angus, Ari Spawn, and Tim. Thank you guys so much for your awesome support. You guys rock. This has been Grayshaw17. I'll see you all next time.